Welcome to your weekly Social Jack Influence Factory. Introducing your coaches, Dean Delisle, Kate Hassett, and Jackson Delisle. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going, team? Wow, hey. good. <laughs> How are you, Dean? Good, 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 good. Happy, uh, happy summer. Um, we are, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, it's been crazy. What, what was it? Last night, we were at two different shows. A lot of people know we've been out on the, the circuit uh, with our clients, with these influencer shows that we're doing. It's been a lot of fun. And you guys were at the Business Builder Show here in Chicago at the... Godfrey. Um, Godfrey, yeah. So how was that hotel? Was it fun? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. And beautiful. Their rooftop bar is awesome. It's very cool. It's an indoor outdoor bar. If you guys haven't been there and you're in the Chicagoland area, definitely check it out. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah, so you met a lot of influencers there. You got to work with Verizon and Google. That was a lot of fun. We were up at, uh, Tracy and I were up at, um, uh, at uh, in Lake Geneva at Hawksview Golf Course for the MBBI golf outing. And we had about 175 people there. And first time ever, I actually posted this. I don't know, I'm sure the people that are on with us have seen some of this, but uh, I actually got to see a helicopter ball drop, uh, which, which basically you buy a ball, it's a 50-50, you buy a ball, and literally a helicopter goes above the green and drops them. And whose ever number is closest to the hole wins half the money. So I was like, awesome. wow. Yeah, so if you guys want to check that out, that's on my Twitter and Facebook feed. But I was like, I never saw that before. And so uh, Tom Meyer and I came up with an idea for next year. I said, well, I want Social Jack to sponsor that. Um, but I also want to, uh, I want to I want to ride in it. Like, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I have never ridden in a helicopter. I want to. Maybe we'll get us all. We'll get us all to do that. How's that? That'll be part of our deal. Do a Facebook could, live from up there. Or we could sponsor the bar cart. So I'll let you guys simmer on that for a minute. <laughs> Sounds more Kate, like us. Kate, if people want to join us on social, where the heck do they go? On Twitter, absolutely. We will be live tweeting everything Mike says today. So make sure you follow us at Get Social Jack. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Snapchat. So pretty much wherever you prefer your social, we're there. Right on, right on. All right. So a uh, hearty welcome out to everybody that's listening either on audio, podcast, or otherwise. And Jackson, if people want to join us on podcast, what are those channels? Uh, the podcast is available on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spreaker, and Google Play, and iTunes. Uh, okay. So uh, remember, you can tune into all those channels, and you can uh, uh, you can download those podcasts, listen to them while you're biking, running, working, however you do it. And, uh, and then also, if you uh, <clears throat> if you want, you can listen to us through a the mobile app with GoToWebinar mobile app. And what's cool about that? is that um, you know you can take us on the road with you and things like that. I know a lot of you listen on the audio channel and if you wanna get those uh, numbers, they're in your email that uh, allow you to connect. And then also, um, uh, if, you, uh, if you click on phone call, you see on my screen there, it says computer audio or phone call. If you click on phone call, you're gonna get a pop-up uh, that shows you the number and access code. So those are many different options to join us. And we also love to give out uh, contest prizes for people that engage with us on social media, as well as here. So the way that you engage with us here, and we're gonna have an amazing speaker today, Mike O'Neill, Mike my friend, he'll be talking to us about Sales Navigator. Um, and, uh, and, and so you just basically type into the questions area of the two webinar taskbar. So because, um, uh, you know, Mike O'Neill, as you'll find out soon, if you don't already know, he's the rock and roll LinkedIn guy. And uh, so, uh, and him and I share a lot of rock and roll stories. So who was your favorite live band, live concert that you went to? Who's the favorite live concert that you've ever went to see? Kate, who's your favorite? Uh, I've been to so many because I have my background in radio, just like random people that I would have never wanted to see and and ended up going to see them but um probably you're gonna laugh but probably the um beach boys with my dad it was his father's day present wow 
last year. And I, first of all, didn't know how many songs by them I knew. So that was interesting, but just to see him get really excited and I got us like backstage passes and meet and greets. So it was just cool to be there with him. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Backstage too. Jackson, how about you? It looks like Jackson's thinking hard about this one. ACDC. Wrigley Field. I was there with you. Yeah, we were there and it was like we were like halfway back on the floor and you could still feel the heat from all the pyrotechnics on your face. And it was awesome. <laughs> and I'd say before that, my first concert was Rush and I saw them 12 times. And so uh, Rush was really a, a powerful one for me. So everybody chime in here. So I want to hear from Hank and uh, let's see who else is on uh, LJ's on uh, Jimmy Z. I know you've been to a gazillion concerts. So Carrie says Led Zeppelin in Chicago. Uh, Lori says Billy Joel. I saw Billy Joel. He was amazing. Um, and if musical counts, she loves Hamilton. So there you go. Um, so uh, good to have you on. Uh, Brendan, uh, Allison, any concerts that you guys have been to? So go ahead and uh, pop those in there. Oh, non-rock is uh, Barry Manilow. Yeah, I should have just said live music. Yeah, live music. So there you go. So good call. So cool stuff. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> so rock, let's rock and roll through this so we can get to Mike. So Oh, uh, Mike, said, Mike says Pink Floyd. Oh, yes, I saw them at Soldier Field. That was a good one, too. Um, and Jimmy Z uh, says Rush moving. Well, Jimmy Z and I are percussionists, although Jimmy Z is way better percussionist than I am. Uh, so he um, uh, he mentioned, uh, you know, uh, drums, of course, were totally amazing on that tour. And then, uh, oh, Allison says Halsey, very modern and not a classic like all the others. <laughs> I saw you know her who, when she came in November. That was right when I moved here. I went to that concert by myself. It was great. Show, shows you what I know. I thought it was a boy band. So, okay. So uh, Hank, Con <laughs> Hank Conrad <laughs> says boat songs, Jimmy Buffett. I've seen him about eight times. So always. All right, Social Jack members, don't forget to log in to get all the goodies, all the courses, all the things that we have, um, all the new forms that we have uploaded. Check your messages for upcoming discounts. We are going to announce next week our next influencer development workshop, uh, which was going, which is going to start right after summer. So Kate and I are working on that now. So we're going to go ahead and announce that. And then, of course, you guys get screaming deals, but you got to register early. We have a waiting list of about 40 people and we only hold 50 per class. So make sure you guys get in on that when you see those announcements or you catch them here. Uh, I'm in a game changer uh, deal tomorrow with Pete Christman. We get to listen to him talk about how we're using different scoring tools along with uh, LinkedIn, along with other social media to actually get deal flow. So if you guys want, uh, I think, uh, Hank, I saw you register today. If you guys uh, want, we'll automatically register you. Or if you say no, thank you, we will uh, just say no if you don't want to go to that one. You just type no. But it's actually going to be pretty cool because no matter who is going after deals, this is going to sort of tell you a way to think outside the box about how to generate success fees. And, and most of us are in a fee-based business or fee-based service. So if you want to be on that one, uh, Jackson, we'll make sure you get in there. And then how to qualify, uh, how to get qualified uh, referrals with LinkedIn. All of us are business advisors. All of us are influencers. Uh, this is certainly a way to do that. Next week, we have the Alliance, the summer conference. Carrie, uh, we'll see you there, I am sure. And then last night, we were at the MBBI golf outing. And there's a lot of people from there that will be there. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's sort of like a close-knit family of advisors. And then some dates coming up. Tuesday the 24th is the blockchain virtual event. That's coming up fast, Jackson. Uh, noon to three, so there's all kinds of uh, blockchain specialists that will be on there. And CIA's Cannabis Business Summit, uh, 25th to 27th, the, the largest B2B cannabis business show. I cannot tell you the number of Fortune 500 companies that are in this business. It's crazy. Chicago's best and brightest, Jackson and Kate will be there Friday 27th in Oak Brook from 8 to 2, and SMSS virtual event Thursday, August 14th. Woo, that's a lot of events coming up. Okay, if you guys want to go to any of these, you want discounted tickets, you know we're the source for that, uh, just hit us up and we will make sure you get in. <clears throat> All right, Kate, I imagine we have some news today, right? All right, Snapchat's, yeah, <laughs> Snapchat's reportedly developing a new visual product discovery option. What's this all about? Yeah, this one's super cool. So 
Uh, if you have the Google Pixel, you know about this. And if you use Pinterest a lot, you know about this. Oh, they yeah. have the uh, scanning tool, the lens tool is what they're calling it. And you can take pictures of products and it'll take you to the site where you can purchase those products. And it'll give you links to just click and buy right on the spot. So that's very cool. Uh, so Snapchat's really moving towards that e-commerce uh, integration in there. So that's that's awesome. Uh, they already have the, uh, uh, you can play a song and uh, if you record it like a video, it will give you the link to the uh, Spotify or Apple Music, whatever you use, uh, so that you can go and download that song right away. So they're like they're really quick wow. moving towards that, and they're trying to uh, get towards what Pinterest has, and eventually what Google has. Google has so much more built into it. It's uh, but Snapchat's moving quick. Wait, wait, wait. So let's say Hank and I go have a lunch, and I really like Hank's shoes. Based on this, I could literally Snapchat his shoes, and they would allow me to go buy those shoes. Yeah, it will. It'll pop up on the screen saying, "Would you, you know, would you like to buy these shoes?" It'll uh, pick out the shoes and that. Well, this is Pinterest. What you're looking at right, right now, right, but right, that's right. but that's what they want to. Uh, that's what they want to move towards is the having it a lot like that. So being able to just take a picture of the shoes and it'll show you all options available that are those shoes or as closest to the shoes as they can get, so. Or I could just offer, you know, Hank some money and buy his shoes, right? So I could go that route. Yeah, I could go direct. A, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for the eye roll, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's a lot of cool things happening uh, if you're using Snapchat. I mean, that's that's or just Pinterest. another cool, cool thing. Yeah, Pinterest has it. And uh, the Google Lens, which you can, I believe, download uh, onto any of your devices. So yeah, it looks like they're going to get into couponing and everything else. So stay tuned, folks. A lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah, I do want nerdy shoes. Uh, they're they're coming back, Hank. For sure. Um, all right, Kate. So let's let's uh, sixty seconds or less. I know there's ten skills on here, but um, and I'm sure we're going to hear a bunch from Mike. So what's your favorite on this list of ten skills to succeed with social selling on? Yeah, so um, what I really liked about this is it talked about skills that you can possess, not necessarily things that are um, taught to you. So, of course, we have tons of social selling resources in the Social Jack Academy. Make sure you're logging and checking it out. We're going to hear from Mike. But a couple things that stood out on this list to me that are just kind of things you should have in real life are using your manners. I love that that was number one, um, because at the end of the day, you are selling to someone through right. social media, and a lot of people feel like it's a little intrusive so you know using your manners showing gratitude when people engage with you I think that's really important it helps to keep it social um, remember to respect others that kind of goes with it asking for help which we preach all the time you know it's all about who you know and then also on the list that I loved was tell stories um, engaging in storytelling makes people more interested in what you're talking about emotionally invested they're gonna want to share they're gonna want to work with you and collaborate so um, of course skills important in all of life but definitely in social selling but check out all 10 with the link in the follow-up email because it's a really good list right 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 as Lori says human to human love it and and carrie's the only one that mentioned my shirt today i thought more people would mention my uh, festive shirt here today. all right so uh so that's super cool all right so real quick before we bring mike on um and we're just going to put up the waiting list um piece here of what you want to be on the waiting list for and we're uh we're pulling some of those so uh, i'm going to launch this right now and then we'll uh, get to mike here in about 60 seconds so there's the poll up there influencer development and marketing do you want to be a better influencer do you want to learn more about social streaming and video monetization just click on the appropriate one I will put you on the waiting list for these classes, uh, Hunter, uh, personal uh, professional branding and storytelling or LinkedIn social selling. Miriam, welcome back. Good to see you on with us uh, live. Okay, we have just about everybody in there. So uh, as we get in, I'm going to, uh, we're going to jump into uh, uh, everything with Mike is always a lesson. So uh, Mike is a two times Forbes uh, top 50 uh, social media experts. Um, 
uh, in the world, uh, named by Forbes. Uh, he's uh, known as the LinkedIn rock star, as I said before, 1,000 concerts attended, 500 trainings delivered. Uh, he's been coaching and training on LinkedIn since 2004. He's into muscle cars. He's owned quite a bit, uh, a, a few of them, but none now. Uh, lived in Colorado for 20 years, Minnesota now, uh, his hometown, and he's known Dean for a long time. So, that's me. so Mike, come on down, man. Good to have you on with us today. And Pink Floyd, man, I forgot about that concert. I should have remembered. Oh, yeah, I got to put on my rock star shades. I put it right. Two in shades, yeah. That's right. And yeah. actually, I'll, I'll expand on that. Um, we saw Roger Waters at Wrigley Field a couple years oh, ago. Oh, that's right. I missed that one. Yeah, cool. That was the All biggest right. wall he ever had. I was trying to figure out how long have you and I known each other? I was on that book tour with Steve Olsher. I remember we knew each other, I think, a couple years even before that, right? Like LinkedIn was brand new. Eight, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at least, at least, at least. And I uh, just want to thank you again, tell you how much I appreciate you and how much I learned from you, like nonstop, you know? So, uh, and I love Little your for you, Little for you. I learned stuff on. Uh, well, that that Snapchat thing is kind of spooky, isn't it? Well, I know. I was thinking about that. Um, you know, and they they said like if you're in someone's house, uh, you can uh, literally snap their couch or whatever, you know, or you know, furniture. And the and I I've seen some virtual reality things like that. But you know, we always talk about, you know, I talk about, uh, you know, me. I talk about time travel a lot. But it feels like we're getting into the space age, with uh, you know. I've been at some of these AI conferences, and I know this is a little off topic, but you know, starting to see where um, social media and uh, social media platforms are getting to this point where they're going to actually uh, help you make decisions or get to things. And I just know some of it's uh, commerce related, but I also think you know, you and I have done a lot of training. I think combined, now we've probably done I don't know, probably thousands of trainings between you and I. You know, we don't even count half the ones that we do, right? So, um, you know, as I think about it, if somebody could package what you and I train people to do, and we've been through this, and, and a lot of people have taken our courses, and yet we see them not practicing. I'll see them online, and they're not doing it. And I think if there is a way that we could infuse some of our lessons into more artificial intelligence uh, to help them along, what do you think about that? I mean, well, sure. it, we're going to talk about futures at the end, but let's talk about it just for a moment here, because... Um, artificial intelligence, like you described, um, is going to play a really interesting role, and I think it's going to be embedded into our browser. Okay, the browser is going to. Oh, the happen. browser level. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where it's going to happen, because the browser sees all the stuff that you're doing. Right. So it knows the if he does this, then he usually does that. Does this usually does that? Then all of a sudden, we're just going to do that and tell you that we did it, or not even tell you. We're just automatically do the things you automatically do for yourself on the snapchat thing this is where it gets tricky this is this is this is the one the, the part it isn't about taking a picture of an item i take a picture of dean and it and the phone shows me all this stuff about dean where he went to school what his credit score is you know um uh is he a left-hander you know is he is he a a, a cubs fan um you know and and you could get into spooky territory there too oh, you know yeah, what else right. could it find out I mean, you you everything else yeah recognition. well and we're going to get into some things related to sales and account management social selling and that sort of thing but <clears throat> let's 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 take a shift to linkedin because a lot of the people listening in uh, know that you and i you know have lived our lives in linkedin and been through the evolution um, when, you know, so last night I'm at this golf outing, I was actually thinking about you, not because you're a golfer, because I'm talking to people. And this guy said, I said, well, how, how you know, I'll, I'll see people that I haven't seen since the last golf outing or a year ago, because, you know, we're up in Wisconsin, I don't get to see those people as much. And, um, and I, and I go to this guy and he, and I'm like, uh, well, how's it going with LinkedIn? He goes, well, I'm logging in at least once a week now. And he used to log in like twice a year. <clears throat> financial uh, advisor guy right so and he goes well i logged in because somebody said that i knew somebody and i had to go in and look and he said i realized how many other people that i knew so so when you have people that you're in front of that are like you know hey mike you know tell me a little bit about why i should linkedin how do you respond to that 
Well, if, if you're not on LinkedIn, you're 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 just part of this part of the business community that doesn't matter as much. You know, you're 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 part of something that doesn't rely on accountability or branding or or, or reputation or or anything like that. You know, you've chosen to kind of go off the grid. You probably you know maybe you have a bicycle instead of a car. You know, right. Um, and 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 by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a car right now. My son crashed my car, and I have not bought it. <laughs> so, um, but in the days of Uber, it's a little bit different and stuff. You know, we were just, we were just, you know, our last three trips, I just Ubered everywhere. So it's, you know, maybe not, not quite the same, the same thing there. But, but if you're not, if you're not there, it's like being not in the phone book and, and just like not existing. You know, and if you're going to be there and exist, well, then why not look good and why not do something with it? Right. It doesn't take as much effort as it used to be. You know, knowledge is a little cheaper nowadays. You know, the defaults are a little better. This LinkedIn doesn't do as much as it used to, quite frankly. So it's easier. Right. Yeah, there's not as much to get in the way, not as much noise. Yeah, they took a bunch of features away. So we're not troubled by them. Right? <laughs> well, now they're a navigator, which you're going to tell us about in a minute. So, um, yeah, that's, so, that's so tell me. Thinking. Is the, the migration from LinkedIn to Sales Navigator happened like boom? Um, right. Our I I cut 25 clients over in in less than a month from from one to the other when when LinkedIn nixed a whole bunch of features and um, frankly you know they were they were paying 60 bucks for LinkedIn anyway for the Business Plus for the premium and Sales Navigator is only 80 bucks it's 20 dollars more it right all this extra stuff so yeah, so, really so, so, so no yeah, so what what uh why would somebody consider jumping to navigator? Like what when do they hit the wall or the ceiling and need to get to that next level? Because that's a big jump in terms of how it's how to use it, you know, in terms of yeah, it's a whole separate program, you know, it's right. like Word and Excel, you know. They're similar, you know, file save as, file save as, but you know, they're they're quite a bit different, you know, you do right. different things with them. If um first of all, if if you find out you're you're using LinkedIn too much, and you'll know that. It's called the accept, the accept, acceptable use limit, commercial use limit, they call it. You right. get this screen that says, you've used it too much. So if you've ever gotten that, now you've got a decision to make. Do I wanna wait until the first of the month to get some of that going again until I run out of gas again, or do I wanna pay for something? And if I'm gonna pay for something, Sales Navigator is what to pay for, not the premium version of LinkedIn. Either one of those will do that. But if you, if you, for example, target, if you're, tar it's targeting that's the big deal. If you like to target by state, and states are great to target. If you're doing a nationwide campaign, you do Minnesota, then you do Wisconsin, then you do Iowa. States are great for segmenting campaigns, Dean. That, that, say, um, states and industries. That's what I was going to say, industries come to mind. Yep, yeah, because they're both mutually exclusive. You can't live in two states, you can't have two industries. And so if you sum up all the states, you'll pretty much get everybody. There's a few folks that put in zero, 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 zero for their zip code. It just says United States. That's the trick. There. Right. Um, but for the most part, you'll get everybody. And if you take all 147 industries, you'll get everyone as well. So that's why we like to slice them that way. And most folks generally don't, don't do business with all industries. I don't deal with law enforcement. I don't deal with judiciary. I don't deal with veterinarians, you know, whatever right. it is. So, Here's our list of 147 industries, and they're all checked by default to begin with. As soon as I check one, what do I do? Uncheck 146 others. Right. So that kind of that kind of principle. Whole United States. You can say instead of United States, I'll just take Minnesota. And you find out that well, boy, I got more room here. I'll, I'll combine Minnesota and Iowa together. I'll take. I'll and oh, that's enough. And how much is enough, Dean? How many how many results can we get in a search? How many is enough? Where do we want to go up to? Well, yeah, that's the, you know, so, so break that apart for me. So that's always, you know, that's always my balance is, you know, I do the, you know, I teach the 20 minute a day component for people to, to do what we call power moves. And then, you know, we teach primarily in the LinkedIn and LinkedIn premium arena. So there's a balance between social selling and marketing. And how do you describe that within LinkedIn or sales navigator? It's like, you got the marketing. Yeah. Marketing is one to many, you know, a bit, a bit anonymous, you know, and then it becomes social selling once there's some sort of a bite on the hook, some sort yeah. of acknowledgement. That's great. The I love it. The hook might be that, that they connected, you know, it's a little bite, little bite, but it's, it opens up a lot of things because when you connect with somebody, and I just did a post on this, an article on this just yesterday, 
when you connect with someone, there's seven things that you get to do that you don't get to do when you're not connected. You know, you, you get to send them as many messages as you like. That's that's pretty nice. You get an email from them. All right, you get an email address. I mean, there's a way to shut it off now. Okay, in the back, no one knows about it, but there's a way to shut it off. But everyone pretty much sees your email address. You you can endorse somebody. You can you can introduce them really easily to other people. You can recommend them. You know, there there you see a phone number for most folks, and the phone number you do see for them is a cell number usually. Right. So why not connect? I mean, what, what's the downside of that? Would I not? Why wouldn't I want to have seven options for engaging someone instead of, you know, maybe one? Right. And and I, maybe it's uh, maybe it's what level of uh, life I'm in. So I, you know, I have a huge marketing background. We have about, I think I said uh, earlier to you, I think we have about seventy seven thousand subscribers in our database. You know, it's a massive database. But we don't really have a relationship with all those people. We have better relationships with people on our Twitter account, on our LinkedIn, on our Facebook. You know, that's where the relationships are. And then it comes down to Dean. Who does Dean have a relationship? Who does Kate have a relationship? Who does Jackson have a relationship with? Um, so how does Sales Navigator help us to switch between the, the marketing side of that one to many and the personalization of the relationship? Well, it does a lot, but it could do a lot more. Okay, so for me to say that how, how wonderful Sales Navigator needs to be said, and it should be a whole lot more than it is. Okay, I mean, it is it is lacking more than it has, quite frankly, but it has a lot. So what you just described right there is one of the top applications for Sales Navigator, Team Edition. So across your team, now this is a high-end high -end app here. It's a grand, a grand a year per user and it's billed in, in blocks. You know, it's not like you can say, I'll take a half a year for this guy. You know, it's, it's like big rounded numbers. You know, most folks are writing $10,000 checks or more, you know, when, wow. when they're using it. Okay? But it allows you to see when you're looking at someone who else at the company has an inroad in there. Ah, so, okay. So it's team-based, yeah, so team-based selling. A little bit. I don't want to overstate it, but what I described, the basic functionality, what I described right there and you described is exactly what it does. It doesn't do much more. But you have to go beyond the basic version. It's not like we would have three independent licenses. We would need a team license, right? Yeah, it has to be billed to the company under an invoice and the minimum buy is like eight licenses. There wow. So the other way, if you didn't have that and you still wanted to use Sales Navigator in the kind of environment you're talking about, we talked about segmenting things. So if different people are right. going to market to folks out there, you know, you're going to take the computer folks out there and Kate can take the medical folks. And someone else right. can in splitting by industries. Or you can, you know, you can say, I'm going to take Chicago and Kate, you take, you take Wisconsin. Another way to kind of segment that there. Um, it's not a good idea to have two people approaching the same folks um, at the same time. I, I, From the I same company, that. right? <laughs> that's that's that that's the WorldCom way of doing business back then. We got three or right. four reps from WorldCom calling on and you bid against them. I, I was <laughs> there. You go. So. Um, so one of the things that we, um, you know, that that you know, I want you to help empower the folks that are on with us today is, uh, you were talking to me a little bit, uh, and I want to make sure we give enough time to this uh, account-based selling. So that means selling into a company and then connecting to the people within the company. Do I have that right? Yeah. Um, so it it runs counter to the way that LinkedIn natively works. Okay. The native way that LinkedIn works is you put in criteria, you know, job titles and things. And it gives you a list of people. Right. In this case here, we go to a different screen on Sales Navigator, a different screen. Okay. Instead of searching for leads, we're going to search for accounts. Uh. Okay. It has some of the same fields like location, the, the number of employees, but there's no job title thing. We're looking for companies. And, and, and there's about 10 filters there, and, and many of them don't work at all uh, because they're just not populated with data. And I've got a deck on it here. Do you want to see the deck? Oh, yeah, can... yeah. Let me share what you have, and I'll let uh, folks can uh, see this. And then those of you that are listening on the podcast, we will uh, give access to this deck. Uh, Mike, I'm sure you have a link on your website where we can see this or somewhere, and we'll put a link out there to give people access to the, to the yeah. deck here. 
here. So I think they're really they're really going to like this. This is a this is something that most people have not seen or thought about. This is you know it's inherently built into Sales Navigator and it's been there for a long time. But it's the you know the trunk of the cars in front sort of sort of approach here. All right. So in doing in doing so, um, let me get to uh, go. Let's go. It, it, the, the approach is really to think about who needs our product. And, and if we're not talking about the employees that need the product, what companies need it? It works really well for technology. I sell servers or internet service or, or, or business furniture and stuff like that. So, you know, certain companies of a certain size may, may, uh, may, may be my, my highest targets. Sales reps know this. This is what they do. They read the news in the paper that such and such a company happened. Something happened over there. Gates Rubber just announced that they're doing double wackety woo rubber products or something. And, and right. you know, of course, they're going to be adding more servers and stuff. So the way to find these companies is through these sorts of services here. You know, you see them, they, they give you a list of companies. And that's one way. Okay, that's the way that people have traditionally. What do, you, what, do you, yeah, and what do you think about that? Do you think Hoover's and DMB and Fortune are doing as good of a job as they could? Because it seems like the data has gotten worse in some of these systems. Well, if, if you're talking about data for people, that's one thing. But data for yeah. companies is pretty good. Okay. okay. Um, company data doesn't expire, but people come and go and come and go and come and go. But the company's pretty right. much. I find it better, better, better in this approach. It works works pretty good. Okay. So. In this process here, we're going to find companies using the tools, and we're going to save them as an account. Okay. Now, with the afterwards, we're going to look at employees who, who work there. Okay. After there's the company is saved as an account, and we're going to save some of those employees as leads. Okay. And then there's a process to engage them. We'll kind of talk about. Okay. Now, I, I do got to say this does not work as well. Okay. As the people approach the. the the, the approach that we're all all used to here okay this this is this is a half a step down from that in terms of how well it works and you'll see why in a moment okay so you get a lot of filters for people 29 filters in sales wow. navigator over here yeah. and that's, almost over, that's almost overwhelming i'm sure you break it down for people and say well here's the top three they're best popular right? yeah let's go over that Let's go over that. You'll see that exactly. So in, in our hunting, we talked about accounts and leads. Accounts as business, as people, as leads. Okay. So let's talk about accounts. Right? We're not just talking about anyone out there. We want very specific people. Okay. And these are the ones, regions, industries, and sizes. Those Perfect. are the best to, to dice and slice by. You know that, don't you, Dean? You already know that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I want everybody that's on with us and listening to think about that. So for you, what's your top, maybe even type this in as a mental exercise. We have exercise on this target but what if you could pick a region an industry and a size what would that look like for you so uh so make sure you're thinking of that go ahead mike that's perfect I love yeah so I'll, I'll i'll set an example for the team here um for me it would be like colorado computer software computer hardware computer networking and companies from 50 to 500 employees that's Got that's it. that's my specific. You do revenue too, besides just number of employees. The revenue, the, uh, you know, I'm, you're you're a little bit ahead of me here, Dean. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. So, remember, uh, I'm, so remember, I'm from the future, so that's how that works. Yeah, you're about in this case about 60 seconds in the future. <laughs> here we go. So this is where you search for accounts instead of leads. Leads would be above here. All right, and you see some of them work better than others. You're maybe 45 seconds ahead. These these other filters are just not populated. There's no data for a company that has 500 uh, employees in terms of headcount changes and stuff. If you're talking IBM and big big companies, perhaps there's data plugged in here, but there isn't for any of the companies that I've been working with, and uh, and you just shouldn't trust any data that's here. But notice keywords, geography, industry, and headcount; those four fields are in the people search. Okay, okay. There, there are no company specific fields out here. All right. So here we go. So we put them in, we found spread fast. So spread fast, I put the, those criteria in just for our folks that are listening here. I just did a search on a bunch of bunch of industries, company sizes, like we talked about. And I found a list of, of companies here, 672 in this case, spread fast is the company we're going to take a look at. Okay. So, so in, in doing this, there's some qualification. The searches will find folks for you, but they're not all correct for you. They're not necessarily the right size. You know, you got to look and see. And since they don't have revenues, Dean, the, the best 
the best uh, uh, size other than number of employees, um, I'm sorry, the best for revenues is number of employees. Right. So it, it, it's the only correlation. Where it's, which, which just so I can clarify, uh, just because like uh, Lori put construction in here, then there's also manufacturing, which, you know, if you're if you're fishing in that pond, you should have an idea of number of employees and how that ratio or relevancy works, because, you know, are you selling to the entire plant in a manufacturing plant, you know, which could have a thousand employees or, and there's only 10 people in the front office, you know, so I just want to make sure people know their industry, too. Yeah, and, and, and the the. The company size parameter is very suspect. Okay, that that company size parameter comes from whatever the person who created the company page for that company chose from a drop-down box. It's not chosen by the number of employees they actually have on LinkedIn or actually have. It is done at the configuration time of the LinkedIn company page. That's ah. So it's not validated externally. That's right. It's not validated externally. It's just pulled from the company page. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. Big, de big deal. Big deal. So you want to look and see, you, know, you should be targeting companies that need what you got, right? You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, the more open and, and free and, and, and look, you know, less closed down, they look the better. So let's keep going. So here's another company called Jamf. Okay, and you see, I can save them as an account. You can save an account from either from a big list or when you're just looking an account there and all. So when you save accounts and stuff, you know, now you've got them in a different a different category. And and the company pages over on Sales Navigator look very similar to the company pages over on LinkedIn.com, except they recommend leads at these companies for you. Ah. The LinkedIn company page doesn't show you recommended leads, but here you do. You get lead recommendations, decision makers on the company page if you're using Sales Navigator. No such thing with LinkedIn. Right. Okay. Now, does it, does it also show you, okay, there it goes. It shows you the relationships, too, that you have, right? Yes, it shows you the relationships, and you can scroll and see more relationships or see more right in the middle here. 200 right. total relationships here with this company. Okay. Good company, by the way. LinkedIn used to use Spreadfast. They're involved. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, they're, I think they're a bot type company. So, so they recommend leads to you. It's really, really nice. You know, I see how exactly like you talked about how we're how we're connected in with these folks. I have so many second degree connections. I've got two folks from ASU that I could maybe use the, the college card. On yeah, there you go. With this company. So that's the how to target employees there means we're going to look at the employee list out on Sales Navigator. And when we look at people at the company here in Sales Navigator, we can save the ones we like the most as a lead. It puts them in a separate category called leads. Save my leads, okay? Right. And there's a bunch of great things that go with a saved lead, okay? Not gonna go into that right this moment. Maybe I'll touch on it later. Hey, Mike, uh, real quick, we have a question. Um, can you define a little better look penetrable, what that means? Um. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 are smiling. Uh, Andre looks penetrable here, doesn't he? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Ryan Lesko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dean Hager does not look really particularly approachable to me. <laughs> right. So question. is that so is that an algorithm? Do they do they put more factors in that, or is you know is that like? Well, if you look at their profile, if they're liking and commenting and stuff on their profile, quite quite frankly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you can see right in between the summary and, and the job area of their profile if they've been liking and commenting on stuff. So that's another good thing, Dean. That's a really good point. Yeah, cool. Um, I like Andre here. Don't, don't you just want to talk to him? Sure, yeah. It looks great. Okay. So when you're looking for people, we're gonna, we can single them out from all 700 or so there and say, just show me at Spreadfast now the folks in management type positions. I can go down as far as I want. Now we're down to 55. You see, we're whittling down, whittling down what we're going to do. And we can save them now as a lead. And when we do save them as a lead, either from a list or from somewhere else, we can now see, see if we can now see all kinds of things about them. We can save more people, you know, boy, that was good. Let's save another decision maker, another one. And when, where this comes into play a lot is when we're on the homepage of our sales navigator now, we can see the chatter, the, the the liking and commenting and sharing and posting and all that stuff that you see on the homepage of LinkedIn 
on Sales Navigator, but only for the folks we care about. Not everyone connected to, only the folks we care about. And it's meaningful here. In your 20 minutes, I put two minutes into liking or commenting from the from the Sales Navigator homepage. Easily, right. I would add that in. Right. Now, Dean, Dean, it also shows you news and stuff about these folks too, not just yeah, their that's chat. what I that's what I like the news part, you know, because then you have topical things that you can talk about. Yeah, and and you know, the, now you only get fifteen hundred leads with the base program with with the with this professional program. You get three thousand leads with the team edition times how many people on the team. So right. the lead part really scales up when you get when you get to the team edition. I have people who have the team edition because they need it just for more leads than than 1500. Right. So that's how we're getting kind of near near the end of this topic. So in, in terms of, of, of engaging these folks, you connect with them if you're not connected. There's one way. You know, it's an easy way, right? Simple. We know that one. And by the way, notice the little drop down messages sometimes. The little drop down. There's no there's no connect button, Dean. Right. You know, we'll find a find a drop down, find a three dot menu or something, right, Dean? Something like that. So, so what? How do? So what if you just want to connect to the person? You just do a little drop down menu and connect yeah. here, but you don't even see the connect button until you drop it down. Yeah, right. And, and that happens in a lot of places, you know. Or, or send a message if you're, you know, already connected to them, or if not, you could send an email to it too. That's another way to do it. You know, put a nice little custom message in. If you're, if you're really important to these folks here, then you do want to customize a little something there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I always, I always do in those situations. Um, you know, when to see how you're connected to somebody is important. And on Sales Navigator, oh, yeah. it's kind of kludgy. Yeah, it seems it's like really it. Cool over there. But but uh, you can go over to sales now to, to LinkedIn.com and look at it as well. But that that connect how you're connected to the user interface could be a little bit better there. Yeah, it looks like you recommend the same thing we do, or basically look for someone that you know or you have a better relationship with and just ask for the introduction. You know? Yeah, ask if they know them first, right? Because yeah. I can ask yeah, right. to people all the time, but I don't know them, but I'd you know, be glad to introduce you. Um, but I, I do let them know I really don't really don't know Jeff. Um, that sort of thing. But yeah, you look for someone to make an introduction like that. So there's some indirect ways to get on people's radar screen. This is what we want to know about. Pay attention. Yeah, liking, commenting, sharing their posts and stuff, you know, endorsing for skills, things like that that are a little softer, you know, they, they don't, you're not bugging them. Right. You know, there you go. So yeah, engage you with them. You know, we always say think of it like like you're at a big event, you know, like you and I go to concerts, but networking events like we were at yesterday and walk up and talk to the person, you know, engage with their social media posts. Those are conversation opportunities, right? Yeah, yeah, we had a we had a caller or, or a, a commenter ask about how do you know if someone's sort of relatable and, and stuff approachable, and this is what we mean. You know, if they're doing this stuff here, pr pretty good chance, pretty good chance. Right. Now hold on, I just want to help Lori here because she says that's her mo, uh, ki kind of lurking and boosting their ego with likes and shares. But I want to, I want to, you know, because that's cool, Lori. But I also want to make sure that you don't miss the opportunity of having a direct conversation because I see a lot of that. And not that Lori falls in this category, but you know, some people are likeaholics, and I, I was guilty of that in some in the beginning stages, where I'm like, I'm gonna like a bunch of stuff, and then I'm gonna wait for people to come back to me, and that's that's sort of a um, more surface level. It's not deep engagement with somebody, but more getting into a conversation with them, and you know, the people that are in that conversation. What, what's your take on that, Mike? Well, he's doing something, you know. Sure, sure, you know. I I, I'm I'm a much bigger fan of doing something versus nothing because the 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 perfect right, yeah. the way of the good. Right, right, so, right, right. Just in that, I mean, I I will invite people without without sending a custom invitation because it's invite them now or or or, or never. You know? Right, and and I'm with you. Yeah, they won't see whether it's custom or not anyhow in most cases until later. <laughs> right, right. So, hey, but this hey, this hey, is real, really. Real. Real quick, hold on. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna because I want to get some of these things in while I have you. So uh, LJ says uh, no sales navigator has tags, which used to be in LinkedIn. Uh, what are some tips on maximizing that feature? I didn't know if you were gonna get into that or not, but uh, yeah, I'll cover that a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. I'll wait for you. Okay. So um, in fact, uh, I can bring up that that exact deck, which is the CRM functionality. Ta -da. Right. Oh wait. So you call navigator a CRM? CRM type functionality. <laughs> See functionality. There we right. go. Quite a bit of it. There really is. 
Yeah, that's cool. And 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 obviously we see some of these here. Salesforce has leads, right? There you go, leads yeah. right there in Salesforce. Yeah, so same thing with uh, leads is such a misused word. Do not get me started. That's a whole nother yeah, webcast. That's right. Look at all the leads, leads. Oh, look at all these leads. Ah. Leads, leads, leads everywhere. In, in Sales Navigator, just leads all over the place. Similar people, you know, accounts and companies like we talked. Oh, here's accounts. Okay, accounts and Salesforce. Guess what? Got them in Sales Navigator too. Tags. Here we go. All right. So Salesforce has tags. We're familiar with that. And, and LinkedIn right. has them as well. And here's a tag, for example, AAISP up there. There's a, a group that I'm heavily involved in. So let me let me explain tags in two minutes. And this is a really deep dive in two minutes that everyone will understand. So picture a data record. You got a screen with a person on it. Just Dean's on the screen out there. And I could click, in this case, it would be Chicago for Dean. And I might click on um, podcaster for Dean and stuff. So on his profile, even on a list of people from there, I can add a tag and I can later say, show me all those Chicago people. And it will just show me the Chicago people. So it's really good for, for gathering lists ongoing that you're going to go do something with later. And the do something with later means on that, on the great big search screen for sales navigator in the lower left hand corner, the button for tags you say just show me the tag people and you can even add more criteria on top of the tag if you wanted tags are a big deal we, we do a lot of work with that so as long as you tags, plan to do something with them as long as you plan to do something with them that's right that's right and, and yeah. tags started out in linkedin.com and came over here and and if you've used tags in the old system out there you've got junky tags you might want to just get rid of what you had and start over from scratch right the, the, the tagging didn't, didn't come over right. Um, you can see what a tag looks like here. There's three tags for Jake here. And if I clicked on that, I would see the three tags there in the square. Okay. Right. And he's on this list of 13 people from AAISP. I can also filter on leads. So just show me my leads. Here's 289 leads. So these are lists that we can do things with. So that's um, that's my, that's that's what I got to show. Yeah, that's that's cool. So, um, all right. So, uh, you know, I've been to the future. Uh, so if if you're if you're looking ahead now that Microsoft has sort of settled in with their purchase of LinkedIn and things like that, where do you see where do you see LinkedIn going, you know, from your perspective? I'm troubled by LinkedIn's direction. Say um, more. Yeah. I think LinkedIn is going in the wrong direction in a lot in a lot of places. Um, they should be engaging other data tools. There should be a Zap, a Zapier. There should be a a link to Zoho. There should be easy. You, you should be able to download the the location of your connections. It's a data field. They could choose to include that. And the yeah. fact that they don't just just makes the data that you're download so less useful i mean i don't know whether tom smith is in ireland or, or in chicago i can't invite tom smith to my event yeah and uh which is weird because you know microsoft is this whole channel partner connected mentality of connecting to other things so do you think they're going to shift at all and, and get off of that lockdown dime or I, I hope so. I know exactly. I was in the Microsoft channel partner world for 20 years and they did a great job with it. Yeah. You know, you went in on deals together. I should be I should be able to sign up clients for Sales Navigator and get five bucks a month out of that 80 bucks as a as their as their designated. Amen. Right. You know, yeah. um, and, and instead the, the folks like us are just chased and, and chastised by them and, and, and all. Um, now, um, sales reps at LinkedIn are inviting people they don't know now. I know. I saw that. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and what are those sales reps really doing? Because it's funny, you know, I have some big Fortune 500 clients uh, like you do. And so as I go in there and they'll go, well, LinkedIn is coming in to, to train us on something. And then I'll go, okay, well, let me look at the, the curriculum to make sure it matches or it's in alignment with what we're doing. And it's really just a sales pitch of what to click on and you know maybe some high level user stuff but it's not strategic tactical how to get business and i'm just like man they're just missing the boat on half of this stuff you know we, we pick up on that and fill in the blanks you're, you're yeah. 
stuff like that. Um, I've just chosen to, to stay at the upper high, high end up here because there's a lot of people who can really service a lot of people out there. I'm just I'm, I'm just dealing with high end sales navigators. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm I'm the guy I'm the guy that I'm the guy that gets them out of the gate, gets them using it, gets them generating business and generating referrals, and then team up with you for Navigator. So there you yep. Go. And then in, in in the process with Navigator, we use some tools as well. And oh so, yeah. What are your favorite tools? Tell us some of those. So you get, so you get these you get these great lists together. What are you going to do with them, right? So um, there's there's three of them that I'll that I'll highlight, and they're all good. Okay. The first one is Linmail Pro. Linmail Pro. How do you spell that? L-I-N-M-A-I-L-P-R-O. Okay. And they just dropped from 70 bucks a month to 21 bucks. Wow. Totally worth it. Tricky program. I put a lot of my clients on it. You know, with all of these, all of these tools here, you know, the Gatling gun better come with a really good owner's manual and, right. and, and a lot of safety buttons on it. And and right. the, and they don't, quite frankly, they don't. They really you you need someone to help you with these tools. Yeah. Um, but you can you can rattle out. I I, I push out six pages of of, of invitations. You know, uh, of uh, could be as many as 150. Usually, it's about 125 with a few keystrokes. Dear John, dear Fred, dear Dean. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And you know, if 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 you're a sales rep, you know, try doing that 150 times yourself manually. See what I mean? Right. So 21 bucks. Another good tool in this category is called Ducks Soup. D U X dash. S O U P, like duck soup a lot too. It gets people into more trouble than the other. Linmail Pro, less troublesome. Duck soup, more troublesome. Okay, if you if you if you check a box the wrong way, you go too fast. Or the 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 mid midnight for LinkedIn isn't midnight on your computer. So when they kick off at midnight, it may not be midnight. It might still be today when you kick off tomorrow's stuff. Right. Yeah. Lori says uh, chimed in and said she loves duck soup. So. Yeah, I do as well. And they just had a nice user interface update. Um, my advice with duck soup is just keep the quantities low. Keep the quantities low, never anything over a hundred. Okay. Um, just, just, you can set it to go seven days a week. If you like, just try to keep that cap under a hundred, whether it's messages or, or invitations or anything that one. And the last one, frankly, the one that I I'm getting to like the most is called lead IQ. Lead IQ. Let me spell it for you, Dean. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> I'll uh, spell yeah. it. L E A D I Q. How's that? You always ask. There's no dash in it, so I mean, yes. I know I, I guess okay. you could ask. That's, that's, that's fair, right? So, so, so with Lead IQ, what you do is you get your search on LinkedIn. You got your 25 people on a page, Sales Navigator, right? It also works with LinkedIn.com. Doesn't require. Them. And, and then you can push a button and it will go grab those people. It grabs their first name, their last name, and their company from the screen. And it goes out to the big web out there and grabs all this data can about them and puts it into a sheet right there for you, about 20 fields, including their location, cell phones for many of these people. Wow. People you're not connected to. Data, data you would get from a one, you can get for twos and threes. It doesn't matter what level they're at. What they're doing, Dean, is they're they're just grabbing data from the internet out here. Yeah, I, I've used it. Yeah. First name, last name, company. And 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 guessing at the best rec, best info, and you That's still have to you still have to validate it, but it's still better than than hunting it all down manually. So it's amazing what it does. Now it's a pricey tool. It's 120 bucks a month. And you have to buy three licenses, so it's three sixty a month at this at the get go. Um, but that's unlimited. There's no limits on how many you can do. And in your searches, it it does a page at a time. You have to manually go to the next page. Okay, it won't. But but you you could you you got someone on your staff. This is your page. Next page. No next page. no no. That's. Yeah, that's that's Alex and Brett and all those guys. A whole bunch of them, right? You can just split it up amongst them. And yeah. it doesn't, those are not page views. Okay. So so you can just go like crazy with it because it's not limited by the number of page views. It's pulling from the list. Not Interesting. The, so you're not going to get in trouble for using LinkedIn too much. Lead right. IQ. Quick as we uh, wrap up. So, who are your influencers? The people that you look to for for good info or good, you know, learning. Who are your, um, who are your influencers? Uh, some of our we we probably 
have similar similar views here a little bit. Um, I really like Kyle Porter from from Sales Loft. Um, he was the keynote speaker at the or one of the big speakers at the AAISP event I just I just presented at the Inside Sales event down in Atlanta. And uh, he's just always got new things to say, and he speaks to people in ways that really really communicate. And he and he's the head of a great company that does a lot of great stuff. Cool. Um, Jim Keenan. He just goes by Keenan, or Dot Keenan. Uh, oh. Sometimes first name is a required field, so he just uses dot, but he just goes by Keenan now. He's That's got funny. this beautiful, I mean, he's a model guy. He's got these big boys. He was an underwear model, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> underwear model. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know him then. But I have <laughs> quite a bit since. And then I, I think one of the top folks is uh, is is uh, Jill Conrath and Jeffrey Gittimer. Those those are the, yeah. the last two. I think they're just, just good too. Yeah, good stuff. Appreciate that, Ben. Well, uh, as always, we love having you on. And um, uh, hey, what about our shirts? Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, I got the I got you, but you got you have the uh, you have the Summerfest. Tw that's 2016 edition shirt. So there you go. So super cool, super cool. Um, and we always uh, we always pick a winner. So I'm going to do a quick polling question here on growing your influence. So please choose one of these. Um, I want to grow my influence. I'd like to learn more about um, influence development, signing up for flash classes, uh, press release uh, programs uh, that Joe always talks about on our show, uh, monthly social media and power boosting and event influencer marketing. So check the one that's most appropriate for you. Um, so as we bring uh, Jackson and Kate back, um, let's see. So uh, Kate, what did you learn from today's program? Well, to be completely honest, I was uh, not 100% sure what Sales Navigator was before we walked into this. So um, I think he did a really good job of kind of giving a rundown of it. I really enjoyed that. Jackson, how about you? You've done a lot of scouting and drafting inside uh, inside LinkedIn and, uh, you know, sort of kicked off that team and Kate, Kate took a lot of that over. Uh, what do you think about Nav Navigator there? Yeah, so I well, I always was very intrigued by LinkedIn Navigator, and I I never really knew enough about it to go, yeah, here, take my credit card, you know. But and, and I always see the the ad, hey, you wanna you wanna try it? You wanna you wanna try it? You wanna try something? You wanna try? It? And then, uh, but you know, I always I I don't uh, I mean, it would be a lot of help to me, yes, and but i i don't really go over my limits that much so as of right now uh i and, and a, a lot of times when i'm teaching or doing a presentation i'm showing to a room of people that don't have linkedin sales navigator so it helps for me not to have linkedin sales navigator to be fresh on the basic version of it so but yeah no i do like it and it uh yeah i'm in so you were selling it. You were selling it. And I, you know, you were just, I was so, I was so intrigued by it and uh, all the cool things you can do with it. I was like 25 filters. I was like, yeah, that, that's insane. filters. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, you guys, I amazing. Got over, it's almost overwhelming though. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a lot to take it. Empow. Yes. Yep. I just got the red one. That's all. <laughs> you think alike or what, guys? Come on. Wow. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, uh, so everybody, what are you going to put in? A, what are you going And next week we have um, Neil Schaefer on with us. Many of you have uh, heard him on our program before. So he'll be on and um, uh, he's uh, quite a character and he's been part of us. But what, one thing everybody's going to take away and learn. And Jackson, while people, um, you know, something that you learned today that you're actually going to into practice are you going to try the trial of navigator and then mike we have uh we'll put your websites up here too so jump in on that and then jackson we have just enough time to announce our winners from today so who is the starbucks lucky winners from today uh today is uh lori shalil oh so, lori congratulations yeah, yeah so yes yeah, she, she was uh she's rocking it and uh she said she's going to have to, this is probably going to be her last episode on with us, and she's going to have to start interacting with us on Twitter or taking us on the go, so. Yeah, well, and then uh, and then also podcasts, you know, there's always yeah. a podcast for a lot of people. 
So, Mike, we have uh, your website up here, integratedalliances.com, that people can go to, and we'll send out these links to everybody. And then also um, the uh, this one, uh, what is the URL that got us to this one? This is easy, okay. And here's a, here's a, here's a, a tip for folks. Salesnavigatortraining.com. Is that easy? How do you spell that? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. No dashes. No dashes. <laughs> No dashes, no slashes. And then if you want to keep up with uh, all of us in the influencer and LinkedIn world and social social nav and uh, world of that, uh, there's um, uh, at LinkedIn trainer for Mike. Uh, Kate Hassett's up there, Jackson's up there, and myself. And we're always trying to find the best news for you so that you guys can continue to learn um, and, and really grow and become the influencers that we know that, that is a, that next step or that next level for you. And Mike, it's always a delight to have you on. Um, we're going to have you back again, uh, as always. And then uh, it's been too long, brother. We got to get together. So you another strange days, huh? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So whenever we get together, it's an adventure. So we just can't post it all on social media. <laughs> yeah, right. Be, that's right. We got to be clean here. Yeah, right. Exactly. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for being part of the Social Jack Influence Factory family here with us. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike and everyone. We're going to send out the information. Uh, Kate and Jackson, thanks for all your support and all your hard effort in supporting our clients and our audience here. And from all of us here at Social Jack headquarters in Chicago and Mike and Minnesota. Um, everybody go out and start building your influence now. Put these things into practice. Thanks. And we'll see you on the next program. Take care, folks. Bye, everyone. Bye.